In this video, we're going to discuss about fractions. This is the first part of three videos about fractions. Many quantities in the real world involve parts of a whole. The denominator, the bottom of, the, of a fraction, tells us how many equal sized pieces the whole is broken into. And the numerator top tells us how many of those pieces are, there actually are. The same amount can be expressed as different fractions. These are called equivalent fractions, as shown here on the right, where one half can be expressed also as two fourths. But yet the same area, one half and two fourths, is covered in this circle. In example number one, we're asked to find the reduced, simplified form of the following fractions. So let's look at fraction A. And we see here that 2 can divide into both 8 and 10. So this means that we can factor out 2 from 8 and 2 from 10. Since these are the same, that means we can cancel these two out, and that's how we get 4 fifths. In example B, we see we can do that with 10, because 10 goes into both 30 and 10 goes into both 5. So we can factor out 10 from 30 and get 10 times 3. And we can factor out 10 from 50 and get 10 times 5. And then we can cancel out the 10s because they are the same and get 3 fifths. In example C, we see that 24 can go into itself and can go into 96. So 24 divides into itself once, and 24 goes into 96 four times. So that means we can factor out 24 here from itself, so 24 times 1. And then 96, 24 times 4 will give us 96. We can now cancel out the 24s, and that's how we get 1 quarter. In example D, we see that 2 divides into both 42 and 60 to get 21 over 30. Because we factored out the 2 from the 42, we factored out the 2 from the 30, we can cancel those two out. But we are not done, since 3 can divide into 21 and 30. So we can factor out 3 from 21 to get 3 times 7, and 3 from 30 to get 3 times 10. Now we can cancel out the 3's, and we get 7 over 10. And now we are done, since nothing else other than 1 can divide into 7 and 10. In the animation here, we have a situation where we have 50 over 200. So what this animation is showing is that you can cancel out the 0 from the 50 and the 0 from the 200 because they are the same. And that means you are left with 5 over 20. And at this point, you see that you can factor out 5 from 5 or divide by 5. And you can divide by 5 in 20. So that means that you end up with 
5 times 1 and then 5 times 4. The 5s will cancel out and you end up with 1 quarter. And that's what this little animation is showing or representing. In example 2, we're told that there are 55 people at the party and 33 of them are men. What fraction of the people at the party were, were women? So now let us go to the whiteboard and work this problem out in more detail. In example number two, we have 55 people at a party. And that's the total number. So that's the total number of people at party. And they tell us that we have 33 men at this party. So, but they want they want us to write a fraction of what fraction do we have women? Now this is a situation where we have a part over a whole. And what this means is we have the part, which is the part of the party that has women, and the whole, which is the total number of people at party. Now the issue comes up, we're only given men, and we need to find the number of women. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what we do is we take the total number of people, 55, and subtract, which was our total, and we subtract the men, which is 33, and we will get the women. So that means we end up having 22, and we end up having 22 women. Now, in order to write that as a fraction, the fraction tells us that we have the part, the women part, so we put that on top, 22 women, and the whole, which is the total party, 55. So that means we have 22 out of, 22 out of 55 are women. But we want to reduce that fraction or simplify that fraction so we'll divide 22 by 11, and we'll also divide 52 by 11, because whatever we do the top, we must do the bottom. So that means that our fraction becomes 11 goes into 22, two times, and 11 goes into 55, five times, so we end up that two-fifths of the party are women. Returning to the PowerPoint in example number two, we can summarize what we just did in the following way. We have the total number of people in the party minus the 33 men will give us the 22 women. And this is our part. We divide this by the total number of people at the party to get our fraction, which is 22 over 55. 11 goes into both 22 and 55. We factor out the 11 to get 11 times 2 on the top, 11 times 5 on the bottom, cancel out the 11s, and that's how we get 2 fifths of the people at the party are women. 
Sometimes the numbers in a fraction are too big to make the resulting fractions useful in communicating information. For example, suppose you are conducting market research for your employer who wants to know how much he or she should be tailoring the products at a store to women rather than men. You find that on a given day, out of 217 customers, 92 are men and 125 are women. How would you report to your employer the part of the customer base that are that is women? For example, you can report 125 over 217 of the customers are women. But this is kind of a little bit confusing. So here it would be a good idea to approximate for example, you can round this one, 125 down, to 120 women, and you can round the 217 to 220. So that will give you 12, about 12 over 22. And then you can say, well, this is a little more than one half. So this is a useful thing to be able to know how to approximate fractions in this type of situation. Nurses are often required to calculate dosage for patients, and that dosage is generally calculated to the nearest 0.1 milliliter of medication, that is to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. In example four, we're going to explore a situation that requires a nurse to do a conversion. Suppose the doctor prescribes 400 grams of a drug, and suppose that the drug's concentration is 1,200 milligrams per milliliter. How many milliliters should the nurse administer? Hint, if the nurse gives the patient the full milliliter, the the patient gets 1,200 milligrams of the drug, which is too much. So the nurse must give less than one milliliter. So we want to express this as a fraction. So now let's go to the whiteboard and, see, and work this out and see how we could calculate this and figure out how much the doctor has prescribed to the patient. In example number four, we're given the following information, that a doctor prescribes 400 milligrams of a specific kind of drug. And what the nurse has available is the drug is in a concentration of, two, of 1,200 milligrams per milliliter. Now what she needs to figure out is how many milliliters of this drug does she need in order to fulfill what the doctor wants. So we start out with what we want in the end. Now notice that we want the number of milliliters in the end. So what this means here is that this is one, two, zero, zero milligrams per milliliter, one milliliter. But we want milliliters on top because that's what that's that's the unit we want in the end. So this is the same thing as one milliliter over 1,200 milligrams. So we start out with that. One milliliter over 1,200 milligrams. Then we multiply that by the number of milligrams that the doctor is asking the nurse to give the patient. So that's 400 milligrams, and then I'll put it over one as a place marker.
So now it's set up in a way that I can cancel out the milligrams because I have the milligrams on top, milligrams on bottom. So I'm left with 400 milliliters over 1,200. And then, of course, I simplify this, and it turns out that I get one milliliter over three, which is the same thing as saying one-third a milliliter of this liquid version of the medicine that the nurse will need to give to the patient. Returning to the PowerPoint in example number four, we can summarize what we just did on the whiteboard in the following way. So we had one milliliter to 1,200 milligrams of the drug, and we multiplied that by what the doctor prescribed, and he gave the order in milligrams, and then we canceled out the milligrams, milligrams on bottom, milligrams on top, given the concentration that we were that we had. So we ended up with 400 milliliters over 1,200, and then we simplified it to one third a milliliter. Well, thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and take care and be well.